This is pure noise. Bah! All right, anyway. So, no, I'm not creating a new sort of hat. I have a leaf from the um, grapevine in my backyard here. Nice big old leaf. But uh, we're actually talking about photosynthesis today. Photosynthesis. Since we're in the middle of talking about how to get energy from the sun, I thought we'd take a moment and look at how plants get energy from the sun and store it up. So let's start by looking at a leaf. It's where plants generally make the most energy from you sunlight, right? And leaves are green because they have a chemical in them called chlorophyll, all right? Chlorophyll is found inside the cells of the plant in parts of the cell called chloroplasts, all right? And that green chemical chlorophyll is green because it absorbs really well. It absorbs kind of bluish purple light and it absorbs red light and so the green light bounces off and is not absorbed and leaves look green. In fact, leaves often have a little waxy coating that reflects the ultraviolet light so that the leaf doesn't get too hot when it's absorbing sunlight because it won't work so well. All right, so the overall equation that is occurring inside the leaf is it is the chlorophyll harnesses the energy from the sun and it takes in uh, water and it takes in carbon dioxide. That's why you like to water your plants and give them air, which has carbon dioxide in it. Right? And then it uses the sunlight to convert those and hook those up in new ways, in chemistry ways, right? to produce sugar. Kind of like the sugar, not exactly, but kind of like the sugar you eat, you know, which is good in candy. Ooh, candy, candy, candy. All right, but uh, to eat, uh, make sugar, and it also produces oxygen, which is good for us because we take in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. So plants kind of do the opposite. It's very handy, very handy. So let's look a little bit of the details of that and sort of the chemistry side of things. So what happens after some chlorophyll absorbs light and has an increase in energy? Okay. Well, what it does is it, it knocks an electron up to a higher energy. So this little marble, which you can barely see on the screen, okay, uh, is, is, is just sitting in some place, and then it gets bumped up to a high level of energy. Okay. And then that electron is then put through something called the electron transport chain. Okay, and, and think of it as a little ramp with a lot of little steps on it, right? And it's moved to a certain location. And as it moves, you get energy out of the electron. So as this electron goes down uh, a certain path, it goes from higher energy to lower energy, you can use some of the energy. Typically, uh, often it's used to make something called ATP, but we're not going to worry about uh, all the little chemistry bits. So it, it loses some energy, and that energy goes into making a chemical. Bam! That little domino. Okay, and then it will lose some more energy and make another little bit of chemical, right? And store it and lose some more energy, making more chemistry and storing it up, and then lose some energy and get to the bottom and storing energy there. All right, and so this is like an example of the electron transport chain, right? You put the marble in, the marble goes to the top, right? You start at the bottom, you get at the top, and then it's going to roll down the top. And every time it goes down another level, another step in the electron transport chain, another little cycle is, uh, occurs making and storing uh, energy in chemistry, in, in chemical energy that it can be used later. Now all that is fine and dandy, but remember you just took an electron and we moved it out of the chlorophyll, right? The activated chlorophyll, the chemicals there, and we moved it away. So the poor little chlorophyll is missing an electron, right? And so where is it going to get that electron from? Well, it turns out it gets it from water. When the electron is taken away from the compound and then moved away down the electron transport chain, the section over here, the molecule over here, is missing an electron. So where is it going to get it? It comes from water, right? And uh, actually two different waters. And it takes two electrons from water and that leaves it with four hydrogens and two oxygens because the waters fall apart. Okay, and so the hydrogens are used in another chemical, but you're left with leftover oxygen, and they come together to make an oxygen molecule, and that goes up into the air, and so plants give off oxygen. This is a really good thing. 
because we breathe oxygen. We, as animals, I assume you're an animal if you're watching this, okay, we breathe in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. So in many ways, plants are great because uh, they're the opposite of us. They take in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. And you think about all the plants over the whole earth all harvesting the sun's energy, of course only half at a time because the whole sun is only on one side of the earth thing. But even so, okay, the plants on the earth, it's estimated they harvest at about 100 terawatts of energy. That is six times more energy than is currently used by human civilization. That's a lot of power. All right, and so part of uh, the research project of which uh, we're discussing here in this series, the CCI Solar Project, is to look into ways that we can, with a different set of chemicals, harvest the sun's light, okay, and then break apart water into hydrogen and oxygen and then use it for energy other than growing plants. Uh, I'll leave you with one last little tidbit. If you think about it, plants take in water through their roots, okay and they take in carbon dioxide through their leaves all right and they give off oxygen and they make sugar okay most of the bulk of the plant that is not water is made out of carbon compounds where did that come from it didn't come from the roots so the next time you look at a big ginormous tree okay think about that enormous tree there and realize that most of that tree most of the sturdy, solid, physical parts of that tree, except for the water, right, came from the air around it. It took in carbon dioxide from the air around it to make that tree. This is why it's so important that if you burn the tree down, you're releasing a lot of carbon dioxide back into the air, right? Because it came from the air, and the more plants we have, the less carbon dioxide we have in the air because they all suck it up and make more plant, in a sense. All right, so go out, hug a tree, and think, hey, Way to hold on to that carbon dioxide.